Hello everyone, uh, it's Balkwell, and I'm back from a different universe. Uh, and today we're reading an essay I wrote about the Kobayashi Issa poem Daiko Hiki Daiko de Michio Oshiekiri, or The Daikon Farmer Points the Way with the Daikon. Haiku are image poems. They don't tell a narrative, but instead tell of a single event. Despite being singular, the event gestures toward a larger world. A seasonal reference, in this case daikon, signifying winter, provides a time. The presence of a daikon farmer and a person asking for directions implies a rural environment. It is a quaint image of a person busy at work, but still willing to lend a helping hand to a stranger. The daikon farmer giving directions by pointing with his daikon is a situation that is whole in and of itself. It is an image that is self-containing and that creates its own context. Everything you need to know about the scene is communicated in less than ten English words. This haiku was first explained to me by a remarkably enthusiastic teacher at Tokiwa University in Mito, Japan. When he read the poem, he extended his arm with his fist clenched, as if he himself was holding a daikon. The theatrical component of his reading contributed greatly to the poem's impact. It was in this moment that I first understood the essence of haiku. Later, I also wrote a haiku for this class. It too was about daikon radishes. It went like this. Kimi no soba, ashi wa daiko ni natchao. When I'm near you, my legs turn into daikon radishes. The image, this image was based on the novel Kangaroo Notebook by Kobo Abe, in which a man wakes up to find his legs turning into daikon radishes. In his story, the transformation of the character's legs is evoking Gregor Samsa's metamorphosis in Franz Kafka's story, The Metamorphosis. In my haiku, the transformation of the narrator's legs is evoking the wobbliness that comes from infatuation. I wrote this haiku because I was in love with someone, and because I liked Kobayashi Issa's haiku about daikon radishes and because I liked the image from the novel Kangaroo Notebook. Even these three reasons stacked atop each other do not justify my haiku. My haiku betrays a fundamental misunderstanding of the form. For one, I tore the seasonal keyword daikon from its seasonal context, meaning that my haiku has no temporal reference. Secondly, my haiku is not an image poem. The transformation of my legs into daikon radishes is inherently metaphorical, thus there is no true visual component. The essence of haiku is to express an internal feeling externally through natural imagery. In my youth and folly, I was both too literal and too abstract. I was too caught up in my own internal world to establish sympathies with the world around me. Writing haiku requires temporarily setting aside one's ego, an action fundamentally impossible for a 20-year-old boy. This is not to say that haiku writers are egoless, but that they consciously allow their ego to be subsumed by the natural image that they are portraying. Issa's poem is not about Kobayashi Issa meeting a daikon farmer who points out the way that he, Kobayashi Issa, needs to go. Kobayashi Issa is not involved in the interaction at all. The only subject in the poem is the daikon farmer, who is similarly egoless. He is not an individual, but a part of nature. His role in nature, at the particular moment of the poem, is to pick daikon radishes. This role as daikon picker is so essentialized that the daikon he picks becomes an extension of his body, an oversized white finger that he uses to point the way. This image is inherently comical. The daikon farmer has no concern for etiquette. 
he does not put his daikon down when engaged with, in conversation with a passerby. He does not he is not putting on any airs. He has a daikon in his hand. Thus, he uses it to point the way. Also, <clears throat> also important is the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, a daikon is finger-shaped, making it an ideal vegetable to use for pointing. The image would not be nearly as funny if he was holding a kabocha squash or a head of bok choy. The image is funny because it's so easy to imagine, because the phenomenon depicted is so commonplace and yet so rarely commented upon. This poem could only have been written by someone with experience looking at the world from a dispassionate perspective. Kobayashi is clearly a person who observes, and observes without preconceived notions of which aspects of the world are important and which are not. Each action and each actor are equally deserving of his attention, and thus he is able to notice and point out phenomena that tend to be overlooked. If we suppose that Isa was the one who asked the daikon farmer for directions, we see that he was not so distracted by where he needed to go to fail to notice the daikon farmer's method of pointing. He is not oriented toward the future, but the present moment. The daikon farmer is pointing toward something, but the poem does not look to where he is pointing. Instead, it looks at the pointing itself. This aspect of haiku is emphasized by the convention of including seasonal keywords that place the poem in time. The use of seasonal imagery means that the phenomenon being depicted could only happen at a particular time of year. Thus, a haiku is firmly placed in a certain present. At the same time, this present is eternally recurring, because of course, seasons come back every year. Matsuo Basho, in what was probably an entirely different context, used the expression fukiryuko to describe haiku, both transient and eternal, a fleeting image captured in an eternal form or conversely, an eternal image captured in a fleeting form. Until there are no daikon left in our world, the daikon farmer pointing the way with a daikon will continue to resonate with us as both a symbolic and literal gesture. Through this haiku, through this method of observing without observing, the image takes on a new form that preserves its essential nature, combining the transient and the eternal the specific, and the universal.